hey y'all welcome back to my channel i officially went back to work and it has been a crazy week already and just trying to get my classroom back together so i threw on a face mask one of my favorite ones oh it's still wet it's a um all natural one like i can literally eat it if i wanted to I'm not gonna lick my finger even though i thought about it but to prove my point but it is i'm gonna link it in my description so i'm doing this girl chat because i want us to get acquainted with each other you know get a little bonding going on so y'all kind of know what's going on in my life and y'all can tell me what's going on y'all in the comments and let's just have a girl conversation you know like it's gonna be great so let me just start dishing some tea <laughs> don't judge me i i did butter me some chris i did butter a croissant with some jelly so three topics i'm gonna cover is like dating that um like friendships and my faith because those are three main areas of my life that i see major shifting going on and so let's talk about it because i, I know i can't be the only person in this season who's like dealing with that kind of shift in those main three areas so let's get into dating currently my current relationship status right now i am currently single now that's a pringle but i'm single you know what i'm saying <laughs> um single in terms of you know, I'm not bound to just one person. Now, um, dating is weird. I'm not gonna lie. Like, now that I'm getting older and I'm one of those people who didn't do like serious relationships when they were younger. And I don't mean it like I was just out here loose as a goose. Don't get me started. Like, not like that. But um, I just like enjoy my freedom. And so I had a lot of guy friends. I did casually date in college, but then I got up and decided to go to Cali. So um i wasn't really like a let me sow my roots down here and grow this intent to the tree and let's see what fruit it bears type person growing up i would always hear people say stuff like oh you know enjoy your youth and date but don't get too serious too soon and mostly came from people who like you know had something kind of tying them down whether it was marriage or a kid so they were always kind of like encouraging me to keep myself free and to enjoy my freedom and i would hear them say this to not just me but like a multiple people in the family it's like it, it came from different people like you know it came from um family members it came from even church members and not like in a promiscuous way which really sucks that i even have to like feel i need to say that because that's kind of the first thing people think of when they say oh you were just out here being free but that's not what i mean at all I was literally out here just being free and having fun. So I never really made the deep, like just me and one other person type thing because I was like, oh, my youth is for having fun. I enjoy going out, I enjoy meeting new people, and then I enjoy going home to me. So in them saying it, you know, I, I really lived it. And uh, it got me to where I am now, 28, single and no kids. <laughs> Maybe I listen a little too hard, <laughs> but um, I got all that out, you know, like I, I did all that. I did all the partying and I did the clubbing and I did the, you know, whatever I wanted to see. And now I feel like I'm at the place now where, oh, okay, that's done. That was cute. Now I'm like over it and I could possibly settle down with somebody. Not that I'm like chasing it, but like, I'm open to it now because I'm not gonna lie I was not open to it because I just I just didn't want to be tied down and then you know other other things that contribute to it trauma responses and just you know things like that but um I was totally content like I had a good time and I don't regret it I mean it's crazy because it's like people back then were like oh you know live your life have fun and don't be tied down and now that i'm 28 they're like so when you having a kid excuse me when i'm having a what when are you getting married I, I i don't excuse when that's the question um i think it's a little premature i think the relationship has to come first like what are you talking about you're the same person who told me to enjoy my youth and to be free and have fun and who voted and decided that my youth is over <laughs> Like who came to that consensus? Was it like a, a a meeting that I wasn't a part of and you guys voted and decided that, oh, 27, 28 is around the time you need to like wrap it up. Like, wind it up sis, like it's over. And I'm struggling with that a little bit because like a part of me 
I'm like walking into the reality of my age. And don't get me wrong, like I know how old I am. But like really walking into the fact that, girl, you're 28. And realizing that that's not old. The 20s are such a facade, you know what I'm saying? This isn't even completely about dating, but this is just like true stuff. Like the reality of my 20s is just that I thought I was gonna have so much more figured out by the time I got here and I just realized how stupid what I thought was. And so now approaching here, like it just seems like I can't go far without someone bringing up kids or somebody bringing up marriage and are you gonna buy a house? Are you sure gonna buy a house? Because you know, you're, you're probably gonna be married soon. Who said that? Like who said I was actively like in the market for that? And don't get me wrong, I'm okay if it happens. Like I do wanna be married, I do, but I'm not like, I had to check myself because I found myself at one point like, oh, oh yeah, like maybe I should like, let me get serious about this. And then I felt like I'm carrying somebody else's expectations again. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not 18 anymore. You're not 20 anymore. Like you don't have to live up. You've learned this lesson already. Like don't re don't regress, you know, like don't go backwards. You have already, you've already come to terms with that. You don't have to be on someone else's time stamp. Like no sis. <laughs> and so, I remember like I recently had this conversation with like a um older lady like a couple months ago and she was asking me about you know um did I have kids and I probably said no and um she was like oh well you know how old are you and I was 27 at the time and she was like oh well you know you don't you don't want to wait too much longer what <laughs> you mean I'm 27 and she was like well you know though you get you know the risk and geriatric pregnancies how if they want to label you with that harsh term and your 30s the audacity right but um which i get but at the same time i'm not like gonna just up and decide to have a kid at 30 because i'm getting old like i get it just because you like no i'm not i don't know where i'm gonna be at at 30. maybe at 30 i will want a kid but at 28 it just seems crazy to even consider the thought. And anytime I consider it, I don't like snap myself because I realize like it's based on someone else's expectation or something someone poured at me that I wasn't ready to receive. And now I gotta throw it up, you know, like regurgitate it. <laughs> so back to dating. <laughs> now that I am open to be more in a serious relationship, I guess I should say, um, all those things kind of like factor in because those are obviously conversations you need to have but now you need to have them more necessary like okay i'm about i'm approaching 30 and most guys are either close in age or older that i'm willing to even give the time to so what are your thoughts like i've heard some people say like that i know oh i want to have a my first kid at 30 and i'm like that's cute for you and whoever you end up with. I'm assuming she's like 26 right now. Good luck. Like, because I just, not me. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, like all this could change in a year. <laughs> if you can meet the right person, I get that. But where I am right now, this is just where I stand. So um, moving back, I moved back home. Like I'm back in my hometown-ish, ish. And um, I don't know, dating has just seemed so far-fetched because you know like when you're from like a smaller town and then you leave and then you come back and it's like a lot of people are still on that same like I don't want to like people take it the wrong way but it's like they talk about the same stuff and doing the same things or they are changing but not in every area that matters and it's like oh you get to talking to them long enough you still realize they still kind of think a certain way and it's not like putting myself on a pedestal but at the same time I'm not on the ground like I do have a standard of me and just a end of expectation and I have evolved a lot and some of it is credited to leaving and going to a bigger city and being exposed to different things and some of it is just simply maturing and growing up and realizing that hey that was childish I'm, I don't think and act like a child anymore it's time to grow up and then you come home and see some of the stuff that's still going on it's like I'm not entertaining that <laughs> We have nothing to talk about. And I like to talk, as you can see. So if we don't have nothing to talk about, what are we doing? Conversation, engagement. So it's been really like mm, slim pickings so far. And yeah. And so I did end up meeting one person who I thought was pretty cool. And um, 
you know, I'm like, where are you going from? Like, out of the blue. Like, you say you're from here. But I don't ever remember ever seeing you before. But okay, so you say. Um, and it was cool. And we just, you know, we're friends. We are building a friendship. I haven't actually talked to him in a while because he kind of pissed me off low key a little bit. And then I kind of like backed up a little bit from something that happened. So, anywho, but that's a whole other story. But um, I realized me and him were a lot alike and that was kind of different too. Um, he he said I was like the, the female version of him, uh, which I could kind of agree to in certain areas. But anyways, we friends. So it, it's, I really do appreciate the growing from friends stage because it gives you the ability, the ability to be like, you know what, I'm glad we were only here. Because here, I'd have been probably like, you know what, I'm gonna roll up at this boy house. But I'm not, you know, that's also not what I do now. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so dating is, is weird. Also, like, my cutoff can't be so strong. And I know, okay, it was. It was a trauma response, like, Stuff from like my childhood or whatever but and I would just be like you know what mm, I don't like that mm, you remind me of something or mm, that's triggering done like I'm gonna leave before you get to leave ha gotcha type thing and that's not healthy because everybody's gonna do something to kind of trick you a little bit you know you just gotta be willing to communicate that and that's effective communication and that was something I was lacking so it helped me I learned these things you know I got to experience these things and grow from these things so that I can kind of like be more aware when I am gonna be actually in a serious relationship. It just seems so crazy. Like my, even my family, like they talk about me getting married and stuff and they think and they say that I'm gonna be like a good mom and I'm gonna be a, this great significant other to someone and it's like, oh, how do y'all know that? What was the trial run that told you that? What? <laughs> but I trust you. <laughs> All right, now. He gonna get dang I was talking a lot. Oh peach country peach tea, passion tea mm, mm, mm. friendships. Let's get on that because that has been really weird lately. So you know how your parents say when you're younger, oh, or people in your life say, everybody you're friends with now, you're gonna be friends with later. And you didn't want and you didn't want to believe that. Well, I've been started believing that even in college because I started kind of knocking some of those pegs down. But the older I got, that just became more prevalent in my life. But more so now, like, let me tell you what I did again. And I've learned my lesson in the past, and that's when I, and that is why when I said it, I'm like, you know what this is gonna look like. So I did say a prayer, right? I said that prayer, people love to pray. Um, Lord, there be anybody in my life who shouldn't be, remove them. Any friends in my life who shouldn't be my friends who aren't really my friends, remove them. And they be looking like, when he removes them. Yeah, so. <laughs> Case in point, uh, recently that happened to me. <laughs> I prayed that prayer again and then somebody I was close to for years, like one of my closest friends, so I thought, and um, just ghosted. And it's, you know, really weird to be ghosted by a friend that you consider a friend. But can I just be honest? And it's not to be like snarky or like conniving, petty, or say I was being fake. I'm really not genuinely whatever <laughs> it's just like oh okay whatever i i'm content now with it because initially i was like what the frick because like it was a place it was out of a place of concern when a person disappeared because i'm like oh are you okay you well being like what the frick i started trying to reach out was again responses text calls you know texting calling even reaching out to mutual friends trying to figure out what the frick is going on no responses. And I'm like, hey. am I crazy? Is this person okay? And then to find out through social media that they're totally okay. They just haven't responded to you. I'm like, oh, okay. But you've responded to other, okay. And so I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe that's just a little weird, but maybe they just, it's, it's life, we're grown, we're adults. So, you know, a person like, okay, you know, we, we go through, you know, these time periods where you're just so busy, you just don't really talk all the time. And, and, and I need my, all my friends who are close, all my close friends, we, we are on the same page with it. Like, we don't talk every day. It's just what it is. We talk a lot 
through other means but like having to just sit and talk like we're we not in high school no more we got lives i got i work you know we we have things to do so um at first i'm like okay maybe i'm overthinking it but then my birthday came <laughs> nothing not a, even a text not a call not even a a birthday shout out nothing just just completely skip right on over it i'm like oh yeah that'll that'll do it it's been the same 28 years it's been the same day for the past however many years we've been friends there's a it's you know it's like okay whatever that means let it go with grace and that's my biggest thing just letting things go with grace and i said and i was thinking to myself I'm like wow that was crazy and so i thought about reaching out again just trying to get an understanding of like what's going on but then god reminded me <laughs> of that prayer and i'm like not saying i think he like the friendship was going to be removed because of the person being fake or conniving but i think it may just be seasons and where i'm going and what that person's going maybe we're just going too far off different ways that it's just not gonna really um benefit each other to be friends and that sounds weird like oh, I, oh why would you say beneficial but you every relationship has a benefit if not that it's serving you no purpose i love them I do. And I really feel like anybody who at this point, especially on a friend level, who leaves my life, it is what it is. Like, there is some people, like, granted, I have like five friends, <laughs> and three of which being family. Like, my my best cousin, my sister, and my mom. Like, those are, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, probably, I talk to those people the most. And then I have my best friends, who I talk to a lot too, but, you know, like I said, we, when we get a phone, it's like, okay. We want to phone for like three hours. It's like, okay, girl, so you talk to you in like two weeks on the phone because we got life. But um, yeah, at this point, it's just kind of like what it is, you know, have your little weeping man do it for the night with joy coming in the morning type thing, you know, like the very next morning. It is what it is. And in terms of like making new friends, that's a weird concept to me because not because I'm not open to it, but because I don't like to leave my house. Like, you see what I'm doing? Normally this would be fermented grapes, but I decided to do tea, you know? So like, I, I like to be in my house. It's such solitude. And um, the first one in the world is crazy by itself. You don't know if you're walking into somebody who is not clicked all the way up here to a virus, uh, you don't know. It's just so much going on out there and I just like to be in my house. But um, I wasn't always like that. I was a social butterfly. So like to know me now, you really like have to know me now. and. Um, whether it be on the same type of time I had and that's another thing too like I'm, I'm a very like stay-at-home person and you just start noticing things like oh maybe that's why the friendship was diminishing because it's like oh you know I don't want to go don't say that no I don't want to go yeah I'm very content here and so also going back all to dating it's like well you can't date from your room so you need to leave it but I like to be here and so that's another thing too but I mean, I gotta go to like a lounge. I go to like a lounge or a bar, loosely. Feed me, you'll get me out. But it has to be the right setting. I'm not just going everywhere. I remember being in LA and going to all these events and been on so many scenes. And it's like, you know what? I'm ready to go home. It started there. It started there for real. I hurt my face off, it's not hurt. Whew. Okay, that's better. My lips are so dry. <laughs> okay. If I'm greasy, it's just like off before. It's cool. So, uh, last thing I'm talk about is like my faith. You know, I love the Lord. Hey, hey God. Um, <laughs> I recently went to a conference with my church. It was so amazing. My church hosted the conference. And it was just so like, oh my gosh, it was so good. And just kind of like, you know, giving me more insight. Just, it helped open up my, um, awareness of like some areas of my life i really need to kind of let my yes be yes and my no be no you know and um just how much it, you can straddle in lifestyles and if you know everyone has their own beliefs and you can believe whatever you're gonna believe as far as for me and my house we gonna serve the lord and so uh if i say that then i need to live by that and not just use it as a personality trait but as a lifestyle but knowing that you can still have so much fun like people really made the faith look like either you're crazy um 
or you are boring or just so prune like it's like nah me and jesus me and jesus like this for real and we be kicking it and like my life lit and i know i'm the happiest when i'm like truly living the truth like living my truth and my faith and not the religion but my faith you know and that comes with own, your own relationship and obviously i'll talk more about that and like um have more content regarding my faith because like being younger it's like oh you know that's a old people thing to be like serious for christ but you don't have to be it is, and it doesn't have to look like how it has traditionally looked and that's something else i'm learning and just when it comes down to deconstructing people deconstruct but then they like they deconstruct to the point where they um dismiss you know like they dismiss themselves from it altogether or kind of like just do a little too much and then they go too much and then it's like oh, okay well whatever but um for me it's been a beautiful process of like truly learning god and that's like to really believe in him and to still enjoy life like he wants you to have fun and joyful and joy means joy you know joy is not i'm going to hell if i do this like that's not joy that's misery that's bondage that's fear that's not the spirit he gives me okay okay um no and um just really learning what that looks like. And so knowing like I was straddling the fence in so many areas and things I was doing, accepting, trying to technical trying to have technicalities and then like I just fell off so bad so many times and I was felt I felt so far away from where I know I used to be. <sighs> but then realizing where I used to be is no longer the mark of where I'm trying to be now. It's like I'm just trying to continue to be even better than that. So like not looking back on who I was even when I thought I was in a good place because girl you need to be a little more rooted or we wouldn't be having this conversation <laughs> you know and I, I talk like this with myself and with god for real like you walk up in my room you would think i'm in here talking to somebody face to face but i do be before his face i be at his feet child matter of fact i be at his feet god hear me father can you hear me yeah like okay real tyler perry ish right there mm -hmm. just considering like how lukewarm i was disgusting and it's like i know god be like don't you know i spit you in the mouth like what are you doing sis like get it pick ye choose ye this day what you're gonna do like stop claiming this but then doing this and you, you're not a good representation and that's really what hurts the faith as a whole is the poor representation like people represent christ so poorly put people represent god so poorly like god is not hateful god is not you know um this bully P humans are disgusting sometimes humans are bullies and, and unfortunately sometimes they carry the badge of a christian they weaponize the word in the bible and that's and they take it so far out of context that people just are looking like how could you say a loving god would do that so well first of all he didn't say that and that's why you gotta know him for yourself because if you only listen to other people for your relationship with god it's gonna be a lot of stuff you miss out on a lot of stuff you are like getting false information about and clearly can be easily obtained if put in the effort if you wanted to know how to make a pecan pie you would go on pinterest and research or go on google so why not do the same thing about anything else you have questions about instead of just taking somebody's word and running with it because it just feeds your reasoning for not this is why i see this is exactly why i knew no you didn't shut up you didn't you wrong anyway but anyway, so like I started doing some new things. Where is it? Uh, where did I put it? So like getting back into reading my word again, I got to the point where I was like doing it for a good, a significant amount of time. I heard this thing by um, Dr. Miles Monroe and he was saying like, you know, paying your tithe and not just financially, like with money, but also with your time. And how if you give 10% of your day to God, which is like two hour, two and a half hours, I think it is, something around there. Um, that's still a tithe you know and so i'm like dang i should be tithing more than just financially but also um in my time so growing to that because i did you know fall off so growing back to that i'm trying to be more um intentional i'm being more not trying i'm being more intentional with my time with god so like 30 minutes in the morning and then 30 at night i do need to do the uh in the in between 
during the daytime sometimes and that will really have to be intentional because <sighs> work as a teacher you get off four by the time i get home oh my gosh talking about working out and then all the other things of life <laughs> and i don't and i don't want god to be a back burner so that may require me to have to put in more time during the night and day but i really just I know what I feel and how great I feel when I put in that time with God. And nothing amounts to that. Nothing in my life I've done feels the way it feels. It's not just about emotion or feeling, but I, it, it is about the um, experience. So I've never experienced anything quite remotely, nothing close to what I feel feel or experience when I'm truly living a life that I feel like makes God proud or even just doing the right like just being in my word just living the life that he says I should live nothing amounts to that so um my biggest thing is staying consistent like you know getting to a place and then not falling off or going back and regressing to some sin or just this flesh is just raggedy Whew. Jesus, help me, God, crucifying it daily. <laughs> Pastor Michael Todd had this sermon talking about taking your communion daily. Like if you, whenever you feel like you're struggling or like something may be coming up or like just whatever. Cause you know, the Bible says to do it as often in, in remembrance of me. But on the way to just on Sunday, that Sunday at church, do it. Like whenever I'm struggling with something, like if my flesh is wanting me to do something I shouldn't do, whether it's sexually or like something I want to say in my mouth or a thought I've had that I shouldn't have pondered on. Just like, you know what? I shouldn't have went that far in my thought because you know that hyper reality be gone and just anything. Or even just simply wanting to snap on somebody because that old man be rising up. He was, you know, like take it to communion. If I'm struggling with something that I, you know, I've tried to give up or whether whatever your thing is, you know, he was like, take your communion and take whatever you have. Like I could literally use my croissant and this tea. I'm like, oh, no one has ever made it seem so applicable before. It just seems so obtainable and like sensible. Like that makes purpose. It's not, not saying like before it didn't, but like it just, you know, really using it for what it is for anyway yeah that that was just something i want to say yeah but also like i have like the Version bible app that's really good too like you can do plans daily um they have daily people on their daily like giving um like a two minute um scripture and like encouragement and then this whole thing um but those are really good you can even invite your have friends do it with you and then y'all do it together or you do it privately whatever this isn't a promo or like a sponsor thing but just the things that i've been using there are other um apps out there but uh those are the that's really the main one i use in terms of my faith uh because outside of that i kind of just do my own studying and just study what you need like if you're struggling with um willpower then go find you know scriptures about strength study those or find a bible plan on the uverse app on the U version app on strength or you know if you're struggling with temptation read about temptation to strengthen you in those areas like just go find what you need or just start reading something you know it got everything in now i'm telling you <sighs> song of solomon ha! Is your what? <laughs> marriage, marriage. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but anyhow, but yeah, that's that's it. You know, y'all like I'm just <sighs> me. We come in the better version of me, and this is just who I am right now. I'm sure all this stuff will change. Hopefully, for the better. No, it will be the better. I'm not going backwards. So it'll be for the better if any changes happen. Isn't this nail color so cute? I just got my nails done. It's like sour lemon something. Oh, it's so cute. Like, I was not always a bright color girl, but I'm a bright color gal now. <laughs> Love it for me. Anywho, yeah, that's it. Um, we'll have more girl chats later. Tell me what's going on in your life down in the comments. Like, drop it down. You spill some tea down. 
so I can read it like this. Mm. Mm. Okay, sis. Okay, bro. You know, like, drop it down. Let me see. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. I'm gonna post more videos really soon. And yeah, until next time. Bye.